Well everyone, welcome. As you can see, this is my current marathon layout. And in these next series of reviews, I'm going to be looking at the good, the bad and the ugly. Which, at first you think, no, a $3,000 train set can't possibly have any good, bads or uglies, can it? Well, as we'll soon find out, multinational companies, even such high quality ones as Marathon, have dark secrets from malfunctioning controllers to derailing tracks and even to damaged and missing parts from the, from the factory. So I welcome you now to my first set of reviews for the Marklin Mega Review. Now I'm going to be breaking this review up like so. First, I'm going to be reviewing each of my engines. And I've already reviewed this engine here, as you know, and Thomas and Percy. So I will not review them again. Then I'll move on to my rolling stock, coaches, then freight wagons, and then onto the track system, and finally onto the controlling system. So, are we ready for this first section of this review? The first locomotive we're going to be reviewing is the Marfin 3999. Alright, so let's look at this firstly on face value, on looks. This is based on the Prussian P8 locomotive with witty smoke deflectors, as you can see the small ones. This is quite an interesting model from about 2001-2002, just before the introduction of digital locomotives and controlling systems, so it is not fitted with a chip from the factory if you buy it, buy it new. As we can see, very simple and powerful locomotive. It has very nice detailing along the sides and very simple yet effective design. We can see that the headlights are a little bit slack by Marlin here as this was a beginner model and rather than sitting out on the plate as they should are recessed into the body to make it easier and less likely to break off. It's got a very simple hook coupling on the front and if we move it and have a look at the back. We can see that it's got a relax coupler on the back. Now, there are no lights on the tender and actually no electrical connections between the tender. If we look at it, we can see the underside just there and a small knob which allows us to connect the tender like so. So this is a very, very basic passenger locomotive. But even for this basicness, it still contains driver and fireman and a very well detailed interior of the cab. So overall, from first of all appearance, of course it's not a flashy model, but it does look very nice. But what kind of features does it have? Okay, so what kind of features does this train have? Well this is where it gets interesting, because as I said, I run digital train control, but this train was not fitted with digital. So, I had to get it converted to digital with a very simple chip. Now, of course, if you wanted to convert this train to digital with a special type of decoder, you could have all kinds of things, sounds, all kinds of lights installed. But I just got the simple and the most cheapest one I could find. So, my version of this train has simple on and off of lights, and if the train's going backwards, the lights automatically switch off at the front, as we can see here. And secondly, some kind of strange speed control. Now originally, before I reprogrammed this locomotive, the train would travel along and you could press the button and it would slow down so that you could shunt into sidings. But now, this is what happens. It goes very fast without the button and then slows down immensely once I press the control button, which is an extremely strange occurrence. Unfortunately, with the controls I have, I cannot reprogram this chip. So until I get one of those big $1,000 Central Station or ECOS controllers, I'm just going to have to live with it like this. But it's a very interesting point that these Markham decoders, you pay for what you get. Now this is a very powerful locomotive. We can see that it's got three driving axles, and the back ones on both sides are fitted with traction tyres, meaning this locomotive has no trouble pulling, you know, 20 carriages. So overall, a very nice looking locomotive. With a few little nibs and knobs, strange things happening, these could all be fixed however, 
by just simply reprogramming the decoder or installing a better decoder in the first place. But as we know, no locomotive is without its faults. And so the problem with these kind of locomotives is when you convert them to digital, they are unbalanced. Because if we have a look, we can see that despite the fact that the wheels are at the back, the motor system is actually right here at the front of the locomotive and rests on these two axles here. Now, originally with analog, when it switched direction, there was a huge mechanism just here, and this balanced out the locomotive perfectly. However, once you convert something to digital, you have to take out that big weight at the back, meaning that we've got a lot of weight at the front and not much at the back. So let me just show you what happens if we attempt to go around a point. Yay, derailed locomotive, my favorite. And so this is what happens when you've got too much weight at the front of a locomotive and not enough at the back. It simply derails over the points. Now, no matter what points you have, straight points, three-way points, or curve points, as we can say over there, this happens all the time. Not every time, but every time you get that clinky kind of bump, and it's always holding your breath whether it's going to jump off the tracks or not. Now, I've heard that you can try and fix this by putting weights, such as this lead sinker here, at the back of the train. However, I'm simply stumped to find something that is heavy enough, but also small enough, to fit inside this locomotive. So if anyone's got any ideas, please tell me. So there we go. That's probably the only fault with this locomotive, apart from the fact that it contains one of the older analog kind of globes, which means that it creates quite a bit of heat when used, and also this strange noise. Here, listen to this. Wait, hang on, I've got to unshort the um, tracks. There we go, that's better. Now listen. Okay, well, you might not be able to hear anything, but what I can hear is this high-pitched sort of whining, sort of crackling noise from the bulbs and the old wiring in these. So, the lesson to learn here is try not to buy analog locomotives and convert them to digital. If it's a locomotive you like, or it's really cheap, such as this locomotive, then sure, go ahead. But if it's all possible, if you're running analog, stick with analog, and if you're running digital, try and stick to digital. Now, on to the next locomotive which I'm going to do in this review, which will be, ah, as we can see, my fire train locomotive. Alright, so as we can see, this is a fire train. From the Mark and Starter set, 29, ooh, I've seen to have forgotten. But if you watch Mark and Who, you know that this is Rescue, and the previous engine I just reviewed was Hall. So we have a look at this locomotive, it's nicely detailed, quite as simple, and according to Mark Mazzara's base, a V100 locomotive. We can see that it's got some lettering in German on it, as we can see here. Which if you feel free to translate, because I'm not game to do so. Now, I'll review this as a set, because it came as a set, also in a starter set, and we can review this with its three carriages. Now, firstly, it has a very nice impression. You look at this train and you go, ooh, nice colour scheme. We can see we've got the red. One thing that disappoints me about this is the brown here. Because in a, a later edition of this fire train, it was changed to a nice red and yellow. Because as it turns out, despite how you know possible it is, this is actually a fake train. There are no trains like this in Germany. So they might as well just have gone the full length to recolor that. But apart from that, very nice. So we can see the sturdy locomotive at the front. Nice wagon here with this nice detailed fire truck with a moving arm, which adds a lot of play value for small children, or big children. A simple tanker wagon, one of Mark on stock beginner tanker wagons, repainted with this scheme. And another brake stock van from Mark on, repainted in this scheme also. So now let's have another closer look at this locomotive and see what it's like inside and what features it has. Alright, I just had a look. This is the locomotive and the carriages from the Mark and Sire set 29750. Alrighty, so let's have a look. Well, as we can tell, 
This locomotive has headlights change with direction of travel, which is now sort of a stock thing on most Mark 1 beginner models. We can see there you go. Going forward, we've got these white headlights. And if we change direction, off they come on this end. And fantastic, we've got some on this end. Which has a lot of, this has a lot of fun when you're using your engine in both ways. Now we can see that it looks like it's got a circuit board packed in there, but really the only other feature this, this locomotive has is only two axle drive. It's these two axles here. There we go. They've got driven and they've got four traction tyres, which sort of compensates for the fact that we've only got half of the wheels on this locomotive like driving. Now this engine is very nice, very sturdy, with a plastic body and a metal frame. However, if we have a look at the Mark and Mobile station, like so, what is this? What is this symbol? Well, according to the Mark and booklet, it's something along the lines of like stability control. But when I turn it on and when I turn it off and use a locomotive, I'm not seeing any differences in stability control. How can a model HO train have stability control? I don't know, and I'm yet to find an answer. No one seems to know what that button and function does. And it's not only on this locomotive either, as you'll find out in my other parts of this review. Now, this locomotive has very strong pulling power, and I've yet to encounter anything it can't pull or struggle with. But it mo its motor is a bit noisy. That's because it's got a five pole motor. I actually forgot to say, but Hall has also has a five pole motor, but it's slightly different design. So, yeah, it's not a bad locomotive. But of course, yes, that's right. It doesn't have any faults. What? That's right, this locomotive, I've actually yet to find something wrong with it. Apart from the bit of noise it makes when it's going along. Apart from that, it seems to work perfectly fine. Except for one thing, but of course this shouldn't happen to anyone else. The first time when I got this locomotive, as you can see, it's got driving bogies, which means they move but they've got gears attached to them. Now, if you've got smaller children with this locomotive, it's a problem, because the screw is very easily accessible. And that turns out to seem what something my brothers must have done when I first got this train, is to unscrew it to see what it looks like on the inside. However, this turned out to somehow, I still don't know how, detach the joining section between this bogey and the motor, which is in here. Meaning that the motor went on, but the engine didn't move. So that's a warning thing to all people and all market owners, or prospective market owners, or even just any brand that's got powered bogies. Be very careful with them, because if you damage the connection between the motor and the bogies, well, you're in big trouble. Oh, and in case no one knew, this is the Markland slider system. Markland trains pick up their power from this middle wheel and return it through the other wheels. Okay, so I think that's sort of, you know, a pretty decent review for these two locomotives. And just here, just to put this in perspective, this was the first locomotive I got with these carriages here in the starter set. The second was that one. And the third was the express locomotive, which is now over there. In the next part of this review, I'll continue going to the order that I received these locomotives in. And the next one was this one here. Looks pretty interesting, doesn't it? Doesn't it?